Welcome Summit Racing Equipment fans. This is our first official Facebook Live for 2022. I'm Al Noe with Summit Racing, joined by my good friend and coworker Brian Nutter. And today we have some amazing guests on our show. And these two guests follow along with the theme that Brian and I started in 2021, which is what we like to call great American success stories. It's really interesting, amazing people that are doing things that are just incredible and awesome. So some of the guests that we had in 2021 were folks like Jay Leno, Ken Lingenfelder, Don Garlitz, Larry Nance, David Freiberger, Garrett Mitchell, Frank Hawley, Mike Copeland, and now the hosts of Engine Power, Pat Topolinski and Frankie Foreman. I am going to read now to introduce these gentlemen with what I stole shamelessly from the internet, as I often do <laughs> yet. If it's on the internet, guys, it's got to be true. So, so Pat, you've been with RTM Studios from 2014 to present as a host, technical producer, and engine guru for the show Engine Power. Prior to that, you were an engine specialist for our good friends at KB Racing for about seven years. And then prior to that, you were again with more friends of ours at School of Automotive Machinists that Brian is a proud graduate of as well. It would be safe to say Pat loves and knows a lot about engines. And then Frankie, <laughs> you are a relatively new addition to the Power Nation team. You joined in 2020. You are a graduate from University of Northwestern Ohio, where you are a member of the motorsport team, also a Future Tech Rock Awards finalist. And same as Pat, Frankie loves engines, power, and the technology and science behind a well-thought-out build. So gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. Really, really appreciate your time. Thank you. We're uh, we're excited to be here. So yeah. this is I, I don't know if I've ever done one of these before. So. I have not, but this is going to be fun <laughs> for sure. All right, excellent. So before we get into talking about all kinds of project stuff, Pat, we got to talk about the project that I don't know if it's been on the show or not. I don't remember seeing it. The mini bike project. <laughs> oh, no. Let's talk no. about your psychotic no. mini bike project well, that you're working on. That that's what happens when uh, you know you you uh, you just you, you love engines and. Uh, uh, that that was just an evolution of something where um, it all started out where I uh, I have uh, I live out in the middle of nowhere and I have some land and I, I, I didn't want to walk up a couple of hills and uh, I said well you know I'm gonna go get a mini bike right and um, uh, it, it's you know you could easily get a motorcycle or something like that but I bought a mini bike um, ubiquitous you know Coleman CT 200 EX and uh, um, Lo and behold, there's a lot of aftermarket support for the engine and the bike itself. But uh, being an engine guy, I start digging in the engines. This thing makes, you know, five horsepower. So we, we can't we can't have that. This thing goes 19 miles per hour and it's governed at 3,400 RPM. What am I going to do with that? You know, so uh, so I start digging into it. And there's a there's a couple there's a lot of good resource for parts. And there, there's a local place here uh, um, not too far from us. And I so I was looking through their stuff and I said, what can we get for this thing? Well, evidently you can get rods pistons cams uh everything for it so i i, I pulled this this engine apart and uh, these these engines are it's, you know 212 cc <clears throat> it's basically it's a it's a clone of a of a honda gx 200 and uh so i just do normal engine guy stuff to it right so uh i jumped the compression up four points and i put a big cam in it and i port the cylinder head and i put springs in it and i put rocker arms on it and a billet flywheel and all this crazy stuff and uh, put it back on the on the on the bike, and um, took a bunch of. Uh, it had, I have what a quick change rear spool for it, so I can change gear. And so went from the you know 52 rocket down to a 42, and and now the engine makes significantly more power. I don't know. We never never dynoed it. There are some places where we can get these things dynoed, but uh, I went from a 19 mile per hour mini bike to a 70 mile an hour mini, mini bike. <laughs> and and I, I need to do that like I I need a hole in the head because I'm uh, I'm I'm. As I get older, I'm a little bit more fragile than than I was when I was in my 20s. But uh, now this engine, you know, it turns 9,000 RPM and uh, probably makes in the neighborhood of, you know, 15 to 17 horse. So phenomenal. I, yeah, it's I, just but, uh, it's, I I I'm, I I need another hobby because I'm going to hurt myself <laughs> because. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> it's funny, Pat. I've got a good friend, uh, Brian Brian Downer at Locar. We'll give Brian a shout out. Locar is a great supplier to us. You need to go to Bonneville with us because Brian is determined that he's got a mini bike that he's going to try to break the uh, record at Bonneville. So maybe there's a, uh, a two mini bike shootout that we got to do and drag both of them out there. If I hear mini bike and records and Bonneville all in the same yeah. sentence, uh, that, that sounds like a that I need to be involved in that somehow. So. All right. We're going to make it happen. And we got our good friend, Steve Struff over there at ECTA and everything like that. And he's out there every year. <laughs> uh, Jeff Gurner, you know, with his, you know, crazy fast Audi and, and, 
you know, the land speed stuff is something that you and I actually did a little bit of that. Yeah, we did. It was awesome. So at the any rate, best, the best part about this is when Frankie came to work here, he got all sucked into this as well, because I was talking about my mini, my mini bike and he's yeah. like, wow, why would you want to have something like that? And, uh, so, then, yeah. and so then we went, we went to uh, an event and I brought it with us and, you know, and, uh, he wrote it and then you tell him well, what happened. See, the thing is when I moved here, cause now I'm, I, I had a garage when I was at school and, you know, we, we rented a house and had, had a garage. So I was able to do some stuff. I had a car and all that. I sold all that before I moved down here. So now where I live, I have like a really small, barely one car garage in this place I rent. So I need something, need, basically needed a hobby, but I need to downsize my hobby. And so I actually rode his mini bike and I, I've had motorcycles and stuff growing up. So I rode his mini bike and I was like hooked. It got me. And so he was, uh, he was talking about it one day and I said, how much do you want for your mini bike? <laughs> so I actually bought his mini bike and then oh. it was about eight hours, eight hours later, he texts me and says, Hey, can you go pick up this mini bike at Walmart? And he got himself a new one. Yeah, I, I was without a mini bike project. Cause I was thinking, well, you know what? I'm, I'm, I don't need to be doing this really. Uh, Frankie, you know, he wants something to do. So I, I sold it to him and literally I, I, it was about an eight hour stretch where I didn't have one. I'm like, Oh, I can't have that. So I got another one. And so I got, I got version two now. So, and, and to, with engines and parts and stuff like that, you know, I, I could probably put more, put that money into my car and, and have as much or more fun, but it's mini bike stuff. It's easy. It's fun. The great thing about working on an engine like that, if someone wants to work on an engine, I, I tell this to people and they're intimidated by like a V8 or a V6 or an inline or whatever. Um, if you want to get comfortable working on engines, get you a small engine. It's all the same stuff. Like, uh, like that's in a big engine. It all does the same thing. All the science is the same. All the theory is the same. Everything works the same. It's just one and you can literally do it in your kitchen or in your living room or you should probably not maybe not do that but uh, uh <laughs> but if it, it fits on a bench you know you could yeah, lay it out right. on a bench everything fits on a bench right yeah there's but, not really any special tools you need to assemble it no nope. it's you know it's simple and it's like he said there's just one of everything you, so it's an easy way it's relatively cheap and you just kind of you yep. know get into it and see if you like it or learn more about it or whatever yeah. you want to do you know yeah you want you want to learn how to yeah oh, that. that's, a, <laughs> that's my that's old one that's a picture, that's yeah. a that's the original that's the og that's mean green. <laughs> the og that's that's that's, that's, OG, that's, that's yeah. mean green right there uh that engine on there is look uh, at that sprocket very spicy yeah that's, yeah. that's a 42 tooth yep. sprocket um uh, the, the the engine yeah if, if, when you turn nine thousand, you you can get them cooking that's a that's a 19 inch tire too so yep wow Woo. i was gonna ask you about those tires i mean those are those big balloon tires and everything like that i bet they are not used to doing 70 miles now no no they, 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 yeah. they're, they're absolutely no. not the yeah. big thing is the bearings that because it still has the original bearings <laughs> on it so it's basically like a wheelbarrow bearing which you know it's designed to do 19 miles an hour and then right you know going flying down the road doing like 65 you know that, that particular one, when, when you snap the throttle closed, it has that front end death wobble. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Not too <laughs> bad, but a little bit. I, I know. Yeah. See, the, the more I talk about it, it's the, the more dangerous it sounds, and that's correct. Now, we are wearing safety equipment when we're doing I got yeah. a, I got, I got full – I got pads on. I got a helmet on because I know at some point I'm going to go in a ditch. Brain bucket. Yeah. That's awesome. Good, good yeah. suggestion, Pat. And for any of our customers, if you're going to go build a crazy fast mini bike, we sell helmets, chest protectors. All that kind of stuff. So yeah, make yeah. sure you're Lots safe because we want to keep not only Pat and Frankie around forever, but our customers as well. So, yeah. hey, Frankie, let's talk about your background. And, and Pat, we'll get to you in a minute. But Frankie, with your background, so you're relatively new to the show, um, but you've got an interesting background. Tell us about how you got into hot rods and how, how did you get to being on the show? Well, it's a, I mean, it's a pretty simple story. But so growing up, I actually, a lot of people don't know this, I was not into cars at all. None of my family's into cars. Nobody in my family's a gearhead. Um, we're actually plumbers. Both my parents are plumbers. We have a plumbing business. And that's what I did just growing up. You know, I worked there and I had a couple other jobs as well. And that's what I kind of always thought I was going to do. And then I think I was about 14 or 15 and uh, just ended up going to a couple car shows and things like that just to hang out, you know, and just kind of fell in love with it a little bit and it grew and grew. And so eventually uh, I decided I wanted to do something automotive. I didn't know exactly what, but I knew I wanted to do something with cars or vehicles or something like that. Um, so my high school or my county um, has a high school vocational program, basically with a bunch of different programs. Um, and I ended up doing the diesel technology program there because I felt like that was the one that kind of fit the best. I think I would have enjoyed it the most. And I did. I ended up going there for about a year. Um, and then I ended up taking a little bit of the collision program as well. But um, from there, it was kind of 
what am I going to do next? You know, and with my time being in there, I diesel, I felt was a good backup, but I wanted to do something more high performance and more, you know, something to do with hot rods, whether it was racing or building cool cars or building engines, it was something along that line. Um, and so I started looking at schools like where, where can I go to get a fast track into the industry basically. And, you know, being, because it's a vocational high school, they have people that come in. So I got to talk to a bunch of different, uh, reps for different schools. And there's a couple of different options. Um, but I knew that I didn't really want to pay for it per se, or I didn't want to have to dump out a large sum of money. So, yeah. Cause I'm, I'm a cheap, He's I'm a cheap person. Extremely cheap. I am very very cheap but but I, you know that was kind of my goal is to not have to spend a bunch of money or have a bunch of debt so i ended up competing in um i don't know if you ever heard of it but skills usa or vica used to be vica but they're hands-on competitions um so i ended up competing in those and i made it to the national level for diesel technology ended up getting third and so from that and also a scholarship test that unoh does i earned a bunch of money scholarship money to go to unoh um, and it covered a lot of my tuition. So that was kind of the clear choice along with their program. I mean, I went and toured and went through their facilities and I know both of you guys have seen them, and, you know, been to the school and stuff. And, you know, they have immense amount of money dumped into their high performance program to make it one of the best in the country and really benefit the students. And I really, I thought that that was going to be the best choice for me. So I went there and did their, went through their whole program, the automotive and the high performance. And then while I was there, I also joined the, uh, motorsports team they have a motorsports team where they have a dirt team they race stock cars and uh, ump mods and they also have a drag team as well and then uh being on the motorsports team around that time i kind of decided that engines was going to be that's what i wanted to do that was going to be the ticket i just enjoyed it i enjoyed you know the precision of it the attention to detail that was just some i mean i enjoy I mean, everything that takes attention to detail i enjoy doing it but engines just takes an immense amount of detail and time and prep work and i just really enjoyed that and then you know eventually seeing the end product and you know hearing an engine run everybody loves listening to engines but having to put in all that time and then at the end hear it run see it make whatever numbers it makes on the dyno i really enjoyed that so with my time on the team i started out just like everybody else you know sweeping floors cleaning the bathrooms cleaning parts washing parts in the parts washer and stuff like that and i eventually hung out with the engine there's a there's basically a group of guys that built the engines for the team I eventually hung out with them enough that I uh, kind of worked my way in there and uh, ended up building the engines for the team. And that was, you know, I think that was hugely beneficial for me, just having that experience, being on the team, going racing and being able to get that real life experience, building these engines that go out and race and turn, you know, 8,200 RPM on the track. I thought that was hugely beneficial to me. And then um, I also worked at a body shop while I was in school part time. Um, so I went to school and then worked on the race team and also worked at a body shop. So when I graduated, um, in March, 2020, I was planned originally on going into NHRA, you know, working on a, like a pro sock team or maybe a top fuel team at the time, everybody had stopped racing. So my plan was just to kind of work at the body shop, wait a minute, wait for everything to come back from COVID-19. And then I ended up actually getting offered this job. So I came down toward the facility, met Pat and, uh, I kind of sealed the deal. I mean, I was here for about a day and walk, you know, walking around talking to everybody and just it kind of sealed the deal for me. And I think it's a, a, it's a great job. I mean, I've, I've, you know, worked a couple different jobs, you know, growing up and stuff. And this one is by far the one I enjoy the most. I mean, we get to have a ton of fun. We get to do all kinds of cool projects. Um, and, you know, because of, you know, uh, summit racing and other suppliers and things like that, we basically get to do, what it all not whatever we almost. want but almost whatever we want you know what we think is cool you know a lot of other people think is cool as well yeah. and so that really benefits to whatever we want to do like a 4.3 liter v6 or a inline six four 300 with a turbo you know so i think that is a huge uh a huge plus for me it keeps it interesting and i think it keeps it fun for us but that's kind of the that's kind of the story i mean it's pretty short because i'm not that old but it seem that short i thought it was pretty short <laughs> I, i'm not that old so that's it's you know i don't have like 40 years of experience or anything, but, uh, I definitely enjoy what I do now. So, well, you're on your way and, and that's something, you know, I want to say, you know, Hey, to all of our fans and customers out there watching the show today, uh, you guys are from all over the world, all walks of life. Uh, but we all share this common love for cars and engines and everything that just goes <clears throat> fast, you know? So, uh, a lot of us, you know, uh, don't get to be in this industry every day and aspire to be in this industry, uh, to be on a TV show doing all this cool stuff or working here at Summit Racing, uh, getting to build stuff and 
and help customers out. It's, it's a really awesome industry. And, you know, I, I want to point out that, you know, Pat also has a, a start in a vocational school and that there are ways uh, to be able to get in this industry. And if you want to do it, there are ways to do it. Just just do it. Exactly. Yeah. So, Pat, tell us about your background. So Brian oh mentioned being at, at SAM and uh, also <laughs> during your time at KB. I mean, that that's kind of what fascinates me, because when I think about professional high-end racing and obviously we know the folks at kb very very well greg jason awesome partners now dallas glenn bunch of great racers a bunch of incredible minds too <laughs> that have been able to make horsepower with their team and be for for a length of time they were dominant i mean that's right. the only way to put it is back at the advent of fuel injection and pro stock they were just so dominant it was absolutely awesome and you were a big part of the kb team so that has to be incredible looking for you know a couple horsepower on an engine that makes that kind of power and turns that kind of rpm way back in the day before the rev limiter rules and all that <laughs> stuff but tell tell us about that. that that just fascinates me yeah you know in, in pro stock was always my my goal in life uh when i was very very young uh you know <clears throat> living up in northern michigan i would I, I come from a place called boyne falls michigan right a town of like literally like 300 people and, and, and it's, it's up kind of in the northern lower peninsula of Michigan. And uh, when, when NHR would come on TV, Pro Stock was always my favorite. And, you know, watching all the people, you know, like, you know, Warren Johnson and Bob Glidden and, and, and guys like that racing. I'm like, boy, I, I would love to work on one of those cars and do, you know, build engines for that. And uh, so that kind of set everything in motion when – excuse me, for pro stock when I was very young. So um, growing up, like in 1989, I, I, I worked at a car quest you know, um, and I ran their machine shop and uh, we did, we did everything from, you know, single cylinder to Compses to Detroit's and everything in between two man shop. It was, it was up in Petoskey, Michigan. And uh, it wasn't only just automotive machining and assembly and stuff. We did all the dealership engine work. Um, I filled fire extinguishers. I made bandsaw blades. I made chainsaw chains, uh, relined brake linings, and <clears throat> all this thing that I always wanted to do. I said, "This, this is gonna. This is just experience for. Hopefully, I can get into racing." Well, and, and up there, not a lot of pro stock racing in Boyne Falls, Michigan. Um, so that's when I went to Samtech. I uh, decided to, you know, in, in um, when I, I actually toured the the facility in 1997, and that's when I met my buddy Brian Nutter, who. I've literally known for 25 years, so <laughs> which, which which is it's cool seeing them, you know, looking at them sitting right there with a, with a summit background right there. It's it's, uh, it's really neat. I, I think that's a it's a one of the coolest things I've seen in a while for for people that you know come out of where we have come from, you know, and we, we're doing some fun stuff. So um, I went to Sam Tech. Um, I, I actually I went as a student and I ended up uh, being their general manager and race coordinator, helping them start the race team. Um, so I was there from you know, uh, I guess it would be 98 to 06. And then in 06, I got an opportunity knowing that um, pro stock is what I wanted to go to. I, I being where I was, I met some really great people in, in an HRA and two of them were crew, were crew chiefs for KB at, at the time. It was Jeff Curley and Rob Downing. And uh, when uh, I, I was, I was talking to Jeff Curley one day and I said, you know, is there anything that, would be uh, available in the pits. You don't know anybody looking for anybody in pro stock. And he literally said, well, I think we may be looking for somebody. I'm like, why that, that wasn't even on my radar. You know, I was hoping just to get in on a, on a team just to get out there and get my feet wet. And um, he says to me, he's like, uh, Hey, can you fly out to Seattle? We're on West coast swing. Can you fly out to Seattle and come to the race? I'm like, absolutely. So I flew out there right out of the airport. The person who I said they're going to pick me up at the airport. The person who picks me up is Greg Anderson. He's like, "Hi, I'm Greg Anderson." You know, and uh, so <laughs> I, fly, I fly in there and I, I go in, not knowing you know, one end of a pro stock car from another. And I go in there and uh, they're showing me all the stuff. And I was talking to, with with Jeff Perley, which he did the clutch and transmission. So he's showing me the clutch. He's showing me the transmission. Um, and he said, "Here's how it comes apart. Here's how it's maintenance. Um, here's how it's set up." And um, so I, I, I was doing it all with him and, and then I did it myself. He's like, okay, now go put it in the car. So I put clutches in the car. So I put, you know, put it in, um, got it set up the way it's supposed to be set up with, uh, you know, all your finger heights and things like that. 
And he's like, all right, it's ready. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, that's a, that's the setup for, for Q1. I'm like, wait, wait a minute. I, I've never, I've never done anything like that before. He says, well, you didn't do anything wrong. Did you? I'm like, I think so. So car goes out for Q1 the next day with, with my clutch set up in it. And uh, I actually built the transmission as well. You know, going through building a Liberty transmission um, and, and showing me how to do it. And then, so I built the transmission, transmission went in. I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm not a nervous person. I'm really usually pretty calm and uh, pretty much keep stuff together, but I was really, I'm going to say apprehensive when that car dropped the clutch the first time I've ever done, I've done that before. I'm like, what's going to happen. And everything, Ran we I, I think we qualified number one or two for that round, and uh, then I did the clutch and transmission the rest of the weekend, and um, at, at the end of the at the end of the weekend we're putting stuff away, and um, uh, Greg comes out hey can we see in the in the lounge so I go up in the lounge in the KB trailer and it's like a giant tribunal it's Ken Black it's Jason Greg it's uh, Rob Jeff and they said hey you know we uh, we really like you want to know if, we want to know if you want to come to work for us. And the rest was history. And you know, it, it wasn't even about being an engine guy; it was about being a crew guy. And obviously, um, I'm an I'm an engine guy as well. So when I get to KB, um, I was driving the the semi as well. I drove uh, uh, I drove Greg's hauler half of 06 season and all of 07 season. And uh, but and also worked in the shop on on things. Yeah, there's a there's me and uh, my buddy Greg. I, I, just a side note: Greg is one of the most amazing humans I've ever met in my life. Um, I've never seen somebody so, so passionate, so driven, uh, so focused. And, uh, I can't say enough good things about him. Uh, he's a good dude. Um, yep. Absolutely. Pat, absolutely <laughs> solid. And, uh, you know, your story is awesome because when you have an opportunity like was given to you, you got to seize it. You oh, got to yeah. take it and you got to do everything you can. And that, that is such a cool story. And we've had a few of our, our viewers commenting on that, about that. And, yeah. uh, that's it really is. Lead. I mean, you all of a sudden you're thrown in. You're like, wait, wait a minute. You're going to go run the car? Oh yeah, no problem. But yeah, I, I, oh, man, yeah, no, I, was, I would want a bottle of Tums next to me if I was. It, it was. It was. It was. It was. It was really surreal. You know. And then as 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 we evolved through, uh, got started in doing the, in in the engine room, and uh, then I I did all the. Uh, I, I'm a manual machinist. I can't even spell CNC, let alone turn one on. So uh, um, I'm an old school, you know, etch and sketch on a mill and lathe. So. Uh, um, I did all the manual machining there. I did some uh, one-off tooling, some you know prototype fixturing, and just little things like that. Just uh, there, there's a lot of good guys at work there, but uh, we all had our ideas. And I, but I did all the honing. So uh, I, I started doing hone development, and then we did engine development. And I, I ran a Spintron there. We you know worked worked on development all, all of us together. And uh, mm. and uh, so I did a whole bunch of uh, very very cool things while I was there. And and you're right, the, the, the hearing what you've done for a living. You know, go down a track at that RPM and at that power level. You know, there. I don't know if, if anything's more higher in specific output than an NHRA Pro Stock engine back then. Um, I mean, in excess of three horsepower per cube, naturally aspirated. You know, and they turn stratospheric RPM. And yeah. uh, and now and nowadays, ten five and uh, you know, in fuel injection, nothing wrong with fuel injection at all. Uh, yeah. It's just if if uh, you know the, the the RPM limit is kind of. A, a, a tough nut to crack because engines to get engines to make more power, you got to do a few things. You either got to make them bigger, turn them higher, or do both. Now you have a rule where you can't make it any bigger. Now you can't turn it any higher. Right. So what are you going to do? So you, that, that the development has to go a, a completely different direction. But uh, that's my that's my KB story. I, and I, uh, I, I that, that was some of the most incredible experiences of my life is being on a race team and uh, being with that caliber team. I was there for for three championships, right. you know, I stood in the winter, winter circle. Yeah. There's, there's, there we are at Texas right there. Look, you can see, see that little guy in the, on Jason's right or left there, Dallas Glenn. Oh yeah. 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 That's, that, that's uh, I, I got, I got a Dallas story too. Dallas is a, is a he's a good boy. Doing, yeah. Doing a spectacular job. So. Awesome racer. He has been sawing the tree off this year. Yeah. Just no, he is. I, and, I, and I knew that was going to happen. I absolutely knew it was going to happen. He's a, he's a, he's extremely talented. It's interesting. You know, you, you bring up the fact that, you know, you're from, you know, Michigan and you want to get in this industry and you know, the pathway Rob Downing is actually from my hometown in Kearney, Nebraska, which also not a lot of uh, NHRA pro stock racing going on yeah. in Kearney, Nebraska. Uh, but then finding your way into this industry, like he, you know, he was five, six years older than me. Uh, mm -hmm. And he found his way to working for the greatest pro stock team of its era, really. 
Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's it's interesting because, you know, Greg came out of Warren's shop. Mm -hmm. uh, I did Pistons for tons of pro stock teams. So I, I remember being in Greg's shop there and just watching you guys work a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it, it's interesting because also you were the crew chief for the, what was it, the 79 Malibu of Judd's uh, that competed. <laughs> So yeah. Judd was a big NA guy up until he wasn't, but up until <laughs> that time, uh, he was, oh, he, he, he would gonna, just be like, kick you your know, butt there's tons of Juddisms for people that don't know him, but he's like, you know, this is God's given error and that's mm -hmm. all you get. You can't force right. it in there. And he was a very firm believer in that NA engine builders had to oh. work hardest and they had, you know, to prove themselves out. And there was pro stock truck, there was pro stock back in the day. And he got you, uh into in a racing uh with that malibu of yours and how many cubes was that 40 that was something that was 477 inches as a matter of fact i don't even know if you will remember this conversation when we were when we were in the advent of this you know I'm, i was always been an na guy myself i i, I say if you got to put a power adder on it you, you better start looking at uh you know what you're doing and how you're doing it and and uh because I, I think that uh it is it's the most challenging it, it's the hardest everyone wants to throw the, the turbo or the nitrous or the blower on to make the easy power. And there's nothing wrong with that. It, it's, it's, it, it, as long as whatever people want to work on, I'm, I'm happy with. That's not what I, I love any stuff. But when we did that Samtech engine, I called you and we did a piston for this thing. I remember. A and uh, this was when we put a 927 pin on a, you know, on a four or 500 bore. And you, that, that, remember all that? That was back in, well, I'm going to date us. That was back in 1999. Right. Yep. And, uh, and, 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 that was a there was a 477 inch iron core 842 lifter flat tap it right yeah 4150 carb and that it you know had had a you know big intake on it um had a had that particular engine had to have a gm part number cylinder head which was back then i, I think it was the old uh, oval, oval yeah it was, edelbrock had it and there's oval port which is it used to be like a 3390 that particular engine, we you know we developed that at, at Samtech, and, and that was a that was a, uh, a whole group of people worked on that. Judd, myself, back in the day, um, our our cylinder head instructor, one of the smartest cylinder head guys I've ever met in my life. His name is Greg Good. You know yeah. Greg. Oh Good, yeah, we know Greg. Yep, uh, dude. Sure uh, do. The guy that that guy, it, was, it was weird because I'm working with all these you know essentially geniuses. You know, with Judd and with Greg. And, and and Casey Snyder, you know, and, and yep. guys like this. And, and, you know, these these guys are, this is what they do. So we developed this engine and this was a flat tap at 842 lifter uh, conventional, you know, big block Chevy had to deal with a 4150 on it. That engine back then made 806. Wow. You know, and uh, we turned it 9,000. Right. You know, and, and this was, and this was in 1999. You know, and this is an NA engine, so uh, I, it, that, that's a good engine by today's standards. You know, and yeah. and and we also did that with NMRA stuff. We did we did some small block Ford stuff as well. You know, and that that was the evolution. The seventy nine Malibu that was kind of my my pet project because that car it was like a big bulldozer and it drove. That, that was that's the and it still is the easiest driving drag car I've I've ever driven. That was a thirty six hundred pound car with a with a comp ta drag radio back then it was a 275 ta drag radio wow. and that that car would go 960s at 140 at 3600 wow that's fine. and that this is in 1999 so i remember oh wow. that, that's, when, that, that's when frankie was born <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's crazy you know i remember asking jed like why are you into a 79 malibu like about every car he's like i don't know i just think it's cool you know and i'm like e Arrow on that thing is fighting you tooth and nail, but you got oh my goodness. made it happen. But that, that car was smooth though. And, um, you know, with the students and everybody uh, working on it, the suspension was good. It wasn't anything trick. Um, we had some, it was a conventional suspension with, had some Hodgkin's bars on it, had an airbag in one side, it had some coilovers on it. Nothing, nothing trick. Had a big old one and a quarter inch ATR sway bar, which is uh, that you, you could take your hands off the wheel and launch a car and the car would just go straight forward. You know, wow. it, it was unbelievably nice. And, and, yeah, back then, even with the flat tap stuff, it, it would go 960s at 140 on a on a radial naturally aspirated. So when when everyone talks about how fast their their cars are with one, you know, everyone's like, well, you know, my whatever whatever with this giant turbo does that. I'm like, yeah, I, I understand, but this, <laughs> it's, you know, a, the, it's more satisfying to do it, uh, you know, with naturally aspirated. The, the Mustang program, I thought about how fast you guys were going. 
uh, against some really hefty competition there. Of course, oh, yeah. there was Judd's, you know, uh, LS1 powered, you know, fourth gen Camaro that, you know, it was crazy because the car went, you know, 760 horsepower, 860, 960 yeah. naturally aspirated. He was a small cubic inch guy. So 433 cube being a lot smaller than he could have been, but he's like, right. he just loved turning RPM. Mm -hmm. And eventually that thing made, I think, 1,070 horsepower, something like that. Yep. And it would go through the traps at 10.5. You yeah. know, but <laughs> how, many, real. how many great engine builders have come out of that school? Uh, it was a pleasure because for 15 years, I worked at Wiseco Piston and I was always very clear. I'd come down to the school every once in a while. I'm like, when you get out of here and you go into your shop, you need to call me for your pistons. And I remember how many great engine builders that are building engines today, yeah. you know, got their start as a little tiny shops. And now they're some of the best in the nation. Uh, yeah, in helping, yeah, you know, cool. raise, just raise up people. You know? Yeah. So Pat, how did you get to engine power? So we know you, you did all the awesome pro stock stuff and then the, the <laughs> school automotive machinists, but how, how did you wind up at engine power? This, this is a, this, this is where we all intertwine here. Al. the, uh, when I was at KB, uh, Jason line had this Biscayne wagon. I don't know if you remember that thing. Oh, I sure do. Yeah. And, sure uh, do. um, the, the um, you, uh, summit obviously involved with, with KB summit, obviously involved with, with RTM. RTM came there because Greg and Jason built an engine for the, for the Biscayne, you know, uh, in, in conjunction with Summit. And they came to our shop. And that was when uh, Joe Elmore was, was here. Uh, Joe's my buddy. Uh, he's, he's, uh, hopefully he's watching. <laughs> he's, a, he's a good dude, man. He's a lot of fun to work with. But Joe was there when they had the Biscayne uh, finished. And we, we dynoed the engine and all that stuff. And then it came back later when we ran the car off the track. But when we were there... Boy, this could have. This was probably 2000, 2007, 8, 9, somewhere in there. Joe says, "Hey, I, I know you're having fun and doing all this stuff in pro stock, but would you ever consider coming, you know, doing some TV stuff?" And I, I was like, "Nope." <laughs> I said, I, "You know, my my goal, my goal in life as a as a young child was to work in pro stock, and I and I'm doing it. I'm you know I'm living the dream, and I don't know if I can get any better." And um, but, but, you know, thanks, but, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm okay right here, but, uh, uh you know, st still keep watching because I, I, the funny thing is when I'm building transmissions on Sunday morning, I was watching, uh, which back then was horsepower, you know? And so it, it'd be on when I'm, when I'm doing my work. So I always watch, but, uh, uh, 2014, we did some, uh, driveway rescue stuff and, um, we, they came into North Carolina we did some stuff and, um, came back and I got a call and I got the, I got another job offer and uh, they offered me a job again. I spent a 45 minutes on the phone with uh, the you know, owner of the company at the time, Joe St. Lawrence. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's like, Hey, I, I, I think uh, this no, no jobs utopia, but I, I think you think this was really cool and explained it to me. And I said, uh, I'm in. So here I am. And I, I came in, uh, I came in in, in 2014 and um, uh, they're going to have to burn the building down to get me out of here now because I work at Disneyland. <laughs> so It's awesome. So we got a, a question from Andy here. He says, is the small black Ford still your favorite engine platform? Do um, you have a favorite engine platform. <laughs> the one that makes well, the most power. It, it, <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually, I, 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 do have a, I do have a soft spot for small block Fords, obviously. Um, to me, if it has, if it's an engine, I like it. And, um, I, I really, I, to have a favorite platform, I think they're it, like Frankie when I were discussing before this, they're all, they're all like your children, right? You, you, you want to love all your children equally because you put the same amount of effort in them. You don't put an effort, you don't, if you don't, you don't, you don't lessen it by, oh, it's just this. I don't care if you're working, this, this is a Judd quote, Nutter. I don't care if you're working on a, fork, a forklift engine or an HRA pro stock air en engine, you treat them all the same. Right. And uh, the attention to detail is the same. I don't care if this thing is going to be delivering milk or setting a national record at a track. They right. take the same attention to detail. And if you don't do that, you're just shortchanging everyone. You're shortchanging the people you're doing it for. You're shortchanging yourself. So, but yeah, I, I, I do like small block Fords. I'm not going to lie. I, I have a, I have a galaxy with a small block Ford. In it, so. so you have a ton of different engines, you know, that you've done over the years. And, and we were talking a little bit earlier. It's like, you know, there are, you know, the LS is a small like Chevy, you know, mm -hmm. of today, but, you know, you have a lot of, you know, fans of, of your show there that just love all these, you know, eccentric engines that you guys do, you know, kind of a little bit weird, but kind of cool too, because, you know, you just, 
are doing things with engines that have never been done before with today's technology. You know, maybe an engine that nobody's created new parts for it for 30 years because it kind of went extinct. And you bring this thing back to life and throw modern tech at it and achieve crazy things with it. Yeah. Tell me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think, I mean, in today's world, you know, a lot of people are quick to LS swap stuff. But I think like some of the oddball stuff we do is still, I think it's still really relevant because I think someone who, you know, has a cool project car that maybe they're not trying to, you know, go racing or anything like that. They just want something cool. And they're, if they can, you know, if they can make decent power and maybe modernize an engine, and which is what we try and do on a lot of older stuff, if they can do that and make good power with it, I think they're still more inclined to do that than try and just swap, you know, maybe swap an LS or a newer power plant into it. So I think that's a big appeal to a lot of our viewers still is that, you know, like a great example is our Ford 300 in line six, like a lot of, right. a lot of times, you know, in a truck <laughs> or something like that, the big thing would be to swap in a small block Ford. But if you can make a, a Ford 300 with mostly stock bottom end, you know, and a nice put a nice piston in it, have a nice ported head and a nice intake, and it makes 278 horsepower NA, so cool. or you can put a turbo on it and make 522 and 598 pound feet. I think that is just as appealing to somebody than to just swap a Coyote or a small block Ford. Right. Yeah, there, there it is on Dyna. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's, so that that engine right there. That's a that was that was both of our pet projects. We yeah. we both of uh we, we both really liked that platform and i again if you talk about requests of what people want us to do that's always in the in the top three and and uh i i've i think everyone that gets like kind of like six degrees of separation everyone's had a, a 300 ford in their life at some point yeah. right right and they're, they're they're hard to kill and yeah. uh but this one was something that was can virtually be done to any any one of them yep. and it'll make the same power i mean people were saying oh this thing's gonna do this or it's gonna do that but uh we, we pretty much knew what it was gonna make with mm -hmm. because it's it's not like it's rocket it, science it's not rocket science <laughs> it, it is science so because yeah. it's x amount of cubic inches x amount of pounds of boost mm -hmm. and you know how much air is going through it and how big is a cam and and uh it's 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 a it basically you can get it really close on how much power it's going to make if you know you know the certain aspects and details of what you're putting together so uh, yeah. that was a that was extremely fun we were yeah. very uh we were very happy to do that yeah. and, and we get a lot of we get a lot of questions on that i mean we get a lot of questions a lot of energy but that one because it you know it's very popular we do get a lot of questions on it about um and I just, something i thought we should maybe address is the longevity of it yeah and because people were worried about you know how long would it last at 520 horsepower like does it would it really last that long and uh just for reference we uh, once all our shooting was done, we usually play around with it. We usually keep them safe, a little bit safer in the tune for, you know, TV purposes. And then <laughs> afterwards, we sometimes get to play with them a little bit more and crank on them. And that engine has probably at least 30 runs on it. And it ran for about two hours straight on the dyno, just, wow. I, you know, idling, making full hits, idle, make a, make full hit for probably two, two and a half hours, probably 30 runs. And it still runs like a top. Those are the engines like we, we call some of them anvils. Yep. That's an anvil right there. Uh, that, that, and, and people, again, if, if you had that at 100% load at 550 horsepower or whatever we're making for 24 hours, would it, would it last? I don't know about that part, but uh, when, when you're talking about longevity, do you drive your vehicle at full throttle, full load all the time? Probably right. not. I mean, this, this thing, if you just drove it like a, a, a normal daily driver, it'll last forever. It's got a, the pistons, in it, it's got a forged piston out of mm -hmm. a 390 in it. You know, so, I mean, boost, no problem. The, the, the rods in these things are very robust. It has seven main bearings. I don't think we could ever break wow. it doing what we're doing. But yeah. uh, I say it's got seven main bearings and it's still a, a stock. It's not a forge crank, actually. It's, a yeah. lot of people were wondering about that as well. It's not even a forge crank. It's a stock cast crank, stock rods with uh, rod bolts in it. Yeah. And I mean, if, if you just drove it around in a hot rod or something like that, just getting on it every now and then, like it would last forever. What really wrecks engines is being mistuned. You put an engine in yeah. the detonation and, and that, that that's the biggest thing. People people don't do themselves any favors when uh, when an engine's mistuned and they're pounding on it. So yeah. that's that, that, that's the, the root of almost all evil is the old OE, operator error. Yeah. <laughs> Pat, don't ever look for that extra degree of timing, right? We talked about that yeah. before the show oh, started. I, I, you, you know that I've done that probably a hundred times in my life. Not in, in, in hopefully not. We, we've never, we you know, we, we've, we've had good luck, but uh, there's yeah. always that 
one more poll. This is one more poll. We're, yeah. we're just going to half a degree. You two know, more clicks. Yeah, two, Brian, just two more clicks. Brian, the piston guy, he'd love that because then the next phone call would be, uh, hey, Brian, I need a set of pistons because I yeah, didn't. Yeah, yeah. Really <laughs> repeat customer. Yeah. 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 I've actually got a local buddy of mine here that I haven't seen him in 20 years, but, you know, we we talk like just like yesterday. But he had a Ford truck with a 300 with it, and he was running boost, and he's one of the very first guys I've ever known uh, to run E85 with the thing. But he somehow <laughs> procured a Ford Motorsports block. I had no idea that they even made something like that, but apparently it's super rare. Yeah, you know, but he was running around with that thing, making 450 at the wheels for a long time. Um, you know, it was just, it was awesome, you know. Yeah, uh, that's cool. That, that's fun stuff. And you, can, I, I always tell people, anything will run. One, if you have uh, you know enough ima- enough imagination and enough money, you know, and, uh, and, and usually the money is a big hinder hindrance there. But uh, um, you can make everything run good. They all will make power and they all break. So you just got to figure out where the weak weak link is and just work from there. And, and there's there's ways of doing things. And and I'd I'd rather be the one to sneak up on it than than to just throw the kitchen sink at it and then have some catastrophic failure and then figure out why it happened. So. Uh, uh, you know, there's there's a methodology to engine building. I <laughs> uh, got a question here from Chevrolet uh, Lifestyles. How many pens does Pat go through? Oh. Pens, okay. That, this is, this, this, if, if now you got them riled we're, up. We're on a public forum here, I yeah. know. But, uh, uh, <laughs> but, but remember, keep it PG, Pat. Keep it PG. All it, right? it is. <laughs> now, it, it, I don't I, I don't go through many pens. And the, the, one of the other questions is, how many pens do I actually have? Uh, if you, if you look at the arsenal, there's literally one pen. This is it, everyone. This is so America knows that that there's one pen in there. Um, awesome. the, the, uh, because I've, I've been a machinist my entire life, um, the one thing people think is that they, they ask us. because I have some. Too, he, yeah. has, he has some junk in his pocket. Sorry. Right. I'm wearing a sweatshirt, one, but one yeah, I have is, one too. Is, is, is what you do, is that a, is that a prop? I, well, I, I have a picture. You know, I can show you a picture from the 80s, the 90s. I still have the same stuff in here because I, I'm a machinist by trade, so there's right. just stuff you can't deal with or you, you, you can't. And you need stuff on you to have it, you know, so to, to work yeah. on it. So, and when I started working here, they, one of the things they were like, yeah, so Pat, he's a big NA guy. And they're like, also, he has some stuff. He like has stuff in his pocket, like they're, tools they're and stuff. Warning him and I was like, what are you talking about? And they were like, well, in his shirt pocket, like he has like pens and Sharpies and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm like, no, I do the same thing. And that's like, if you, you know, talk to the guys I went to school with, you know, it's like, just like he said, it's just you need those things and they're on you. So like I have, you know, pretty much some of the same stuff he does, flashlight, pen, pencil, <laughs> you know, mini screwdriver. So there's things that you're always, you always need and you're always reaching for it. So it's just, you just keep so them Frankie, right on you. you it's went for the interview, you had a pocket full of stuff and Pat went, hire him right now. That's the guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was almost, that. it was almost, <laughs> almost like that. Almost, no, yeah. yeah it, it was almost like that. Yeah. No, yeah. he, uh, he, he was, he was, uh, he was a good choice because, you know, um, they did, he didn't, he did an interview, you know, he did a, a video, and they say, hey, will you watch this video? And I, I watch the video and I'm like, well, he's saying all the right stuff, but uh, I got to talk to this kid, you know, and I say kid in the most uh, respectful way because, I mean, he's a grown ass man, but uh, he, he's, uh, he's still, uh, he, I mean, my, I have hunting boots older than Frankie. You know, I, I, my, my, my jacket from when I worked at the towing business, I actually wore it today and I, I, from the 90s. I like this. I, I got this jacket in 93. You know, he was born in 99, you know, so it's, 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 I, I give him a little, uh, um, you know, guff about it, but uh, to be quite honestly, to be where he is in his, uh, in his knowledge and his experience in this business, I wish I was there when I was 22, you know, he's got a bright, bright future. And uh, I, I can't say enough good things about him. You know, it's, it's a pleasure having him here because uh, we, we, we work really well together. If we're, if we're doing something, um, I, I don't have to supervise him. He, he knows what he's doing, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's a, it's a great, it's a great working environment when we can get stuff done. I don't have to worry about. He doesn't have. To, hopefully, he doesn't have to worry about me. Other than only sometimes he thinks nah. I'm too old or something. <laughs> I'm a <afraid laughs> something. Right. I I need my glasses for everything. But uh, um, it, it's a it's it's great to have him here because uh, we we we're a good team. If, 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 if I know that's cliche, but when you have a lot of work to do, the, the thing about working here is eighty percent of the work is done off camera. And, and we do the work. Uh, we don't have a ninja crew that comes in and does all of our stuff. One of the questions we always get is, you know, who, who does all of your technical stuff? Who does all your builds? Who does it? Well, it's, it's us. We are the technical producers of the show. So we are right. the ones that are responsible for not only planning projects, but executing projects and then making them, you know, on, on TV. And, and we have a very good videographer and an outstanding producer director that that makes us 
look good as well they don't have much to work with but they can make us look <laughs> yeah. at, uh, you know as, as good as possible presentable I, yeah. I, I suppose well, Pat, I, yeah. I wanted to ask you what is a typical day in the office like for y'all because you know i'm sure every day is different some days are planning days where you're planning out how you're going to do the project parts mm -hmm. ordering days you know mm -hmm. but what yeah. what is is there really a typical day in the office and what does that look like for you guys it's i'm gonna say it's quasi typical i get here at like 6 30 in the morning um and i, I you know go through my emails and things like that and, and make sure that we um i don't have anything that's pressing to deal with and then we'll come through and, and whatever project we have going um, there, there's always work to be done. Um, I mean, I, I've been setting bearing clearance at 1130 at night on a Sunday here because we have to shoot Monday morning and it's either because of something was, wasn't quite right. And we had to fix something or something didn't come in or something was wrong or something didn't fit right. Or for, you know, you, you can, there's a whole bunch of different reasons for that. But, uh, we, we so by, by seven o'clock, we're trying to, you know, get things going where, what are we going to do today? Any, any given day is different. Some days are planning days. Like I say, we'll, we'll plan different engine projects and we have several different uh, things going at once. Like right now we have four different projects going right now, aside from the one we're actually shooting for TV. We shoot TV pretty much every day. Um, th this is like a regular job. We, we, just, we don't like shoot for one hour. And we, we pretty much will, when we can, shoot TV all uh, at, at five days a week. Um, it On average, it takes eight hours to make two minutes of TV. Think about oh, that for a while. Wow. <laughs> so one, yeah. of the, one of the biggest misnomers that we hear sometimes is that, you know, that we have like an unlimited amount of time. And that's actually <laughs> farther from the truth because, you know, in a, in a, in a year you have so many episodes that need to get done. And like he said, 80% of our work is done off camera. So it's all, you know, it's shoot one thing. And then sometimes you have to do three other things before you can shoot another. So there's a lot of work that goes right. in off camera where, you know, you're kind of pressed for time because you're trying to get shows done and get projects done, you know, and like you said, we're doing all the work. It's not, you know, it's not like we're we, like we like to say sometimes you can't build a TV engine because, you know, we dyno our engines yeah. again. Every engine, you know, it's a real engine. It goes on the dyno and it makes those numbers every time. And so there's a lot of work that goes into that. And there's, you know, not the uh, not unlimited time because of what we do. I mean, sometimes we have to shift, but a lot of times, you know, and at least for us, it kind of comes down to the wire where it's like, this needs to get done and this show needs to get shot right. so we can move on to the next one. Yeah. And it, it's, it's funny because that analogy I've always used in drag racing, people would come up to the ropes and they, boy, I, I, I love your job. I, I would love to have your job. And I, and I, I would say to them, Oh, well, how many hours did you work this week? And they say, man, I worked, I worked 40, 45 hours. I said, well, what did you do after Wednesday? You know? yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and, and it, 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 the people see, like in drag racing, you know, back at KB, they'd see six and a half seconds of your work, which was right. hundreds of man hours. Um, the whole building's like that. You know, uh, we got a lot of, we got a great group of people here. This is a, a great group of people with a, with a common goal. And, and so we have a lot of everyone on the other three shows as well. You know, all these guys bust their butts all the time to get these projects done. And, and uh, sometimes they're not easy. It's like any other project or, or, or situation you have, you will run into problems. I don't care how well prepared you are. You're going to run into problems. And we just try to be as fluid as possible and get everything done. And, uh, it, and the, the, most of it's just the attitude of like, there's no, oh my God, what are we going to do? Well, if there's a problem, the problem already exists. Let's, let's figure out how to fix it. And uh, right. so yeah, there's, there, there's not a lot of messing around. You just say, yeah. okay, if this happened, we're going to try this, 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 and this. And we're going to start at A and we might fix it at F, but we're going to try A through F to see if we can get it. So, yeah. Yep. Pat uh, and Frankie, Kelly asked a question and I think, I think I know the answer to this, but are all your, uh, power block shows under the same bill in the same building you're all in one complex right yes yes we are we are all in one building it's kind of like a warehouse and then each show has their own studio at the back of the building so like right now we're in the engine power studio and then if you go through that wall right there there's music city trucks and you go through the next wall you'll get to detroit muscle and then carcass is down on the other end um okay. from us but yeah so we're all into one building and that kind of helps a lot because you know we do a lot of projects for the other guys and the other guys do a lot of stuff for us. So that really have being under the same building, it's kind of like having one big family, you know, like right. we can all kind of lean on each other whenever we it need it, you know, finishing projects or, 
you know, when we're doing stuff for other people or when they're helping us with some of our stuff, building things for us and things like that. So it's really actually super helpful to have it like that in that. Yeah. I, and I agree with Kelly's comment. I think it's super cool when you do that, when you mix between the projects and you have different people involved and, and different right. aspects of it. Cause I'm sure everybody's got a little bit different level of expertise. Like oh, you guys are the engine yeah. guys and then you yeah, have other yeah. people that are chassis body, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, you, uh, you don't want me doing body work. I, I, I can tell yeah. you that right now. I, I the, the artistic side of making something that looks good and do I, I, I am being a machinist. I work in absolutes, right? So body work drives me crazy. And uh, the people that are, we have, we have extremely talented, extremely talented hosts here. And the, what I love about it is the, we're not TV people. I know that sounds weird, but we are industry people that have, have shows, right? Um, Jimmy and Jeremy down in Carcass, spectacular fabric. Jimmy's a mechanical engineer, yeah. you know, and, and Jeremy ran, you know, worked in, and ran a, a hot rod shop. You know, um, Brandon and Mark in, in Music City, both extremely talented, you know, from working on trucks, cars, all that stuff. Uh, Tommy in Detroit and, uh, and Joel, they are. Uh, and they, 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 this is what they do. This is what they love cars. So they, this is what they do for a living. They, if they weren't doing it here, they'd be doing it somewhere else. They, they, they do it for a living. So everyone here, I'm very, very happy to work with a, this, such a talented group of people. Yeah. So we had another, another uh, customer, Randy Guttery ask any hints on unusual or odd projects coming up? Wow. Well, Can you let the cat out of the bag guys? You know, I mean, we, we have one that we kind of mm. sort of teased on, uh, social media. On, on our social media where we have, uh, you know, two engine blocks, we have two cranks, we have two sets of rods, we have two sets of pistons, we have two of everything. And uh, that's going to be a, a fun project that uh, mm. I think is going to be pretty exciting. Yeah. We, it's uh, all for one project. It's all for one project. And uh, right. we, we kind of put it out there to what is it going to be for, right? And we have yeah. some other things that, you know, that, that we kick around. Um, we, we're, we're like our, our, our oddball stuff. I'm not saying you are, but you might see that 300 Ford back again. And right. maybe it might, it might or might not be yeah. getting stepped on a little harder with some better stuff and some, um, some modern uh, fuel, air fuel delivery yeah. apparatus. Maybe a little bit more boost. <laughs> so, uh, um, and, and we've, um, and, and we say we, we stay pretty fluid here. We got some mm -hmm. projects going um, right now. We, we're, we, we plan through this. We plan as far as we can through the season, knowing what we can get and things like that. So, uh, but we always have stuff going and we, we, uh, we, we do read comments and we do watch uh, what people want to see. And we, people, um, they, they have quite frankly, people, you know, a lot of times give us ideas yeah. on, on what we're going to do next. So, yeah, they, they, you know, we, like he said, we read comments and it really drives our content depending on what we can get parts for and things like yeah. that. And, you know, some it's a big help with that because you guys, you know, have a, a great inventory that yeah. maybe we can't get it from the manufacturer, but look on someone's website and I can get it tomorrow or the day after, right. you know, which is extremely helpful. So we do stay pretty fluid trying to, you know, we, like we like to do cool stuff too, just like everybody else. You know, we don't, we don't love to do the same thing all the time. So we're always looking for cool or different things to do. It just depends on what we can do and what we find an application for and things like that. We like modern pretty much everything. Yeah. Yeah, us too. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. I think we're, we're, all, we're all on the same page on that one. Yeah. So. You know, it, it's it's funny because thinking back to that land speed thing, uh, you know, we've got diesel enthusiasts, we've got uh, gas, you know, we've got propane, you know, like any kind of fuel that you can run through these things. There's, you know, that was like the cornucopia of cool hot yeah. rod stuff. I had, yeah. I had only been to one land speed event. It was when they used to run the Ohio Mile. And I remember being pretty blown away. You were running your Corvette, yeah. got some <laughs> records that weekend. And uh, we went down to Arkansas, though, in Blytheville. And, and again, uh, Steve Strupp and the ECTA folks, great hosts. If there's ever an ECA team, ECTA meet near you, mm -hmm. our, our viewers, you should absolutely go. Out. It is the most broad and diverse variety of stuff that makes power and really cool people. The pits are open. You can walk up and ask a million questions. Everybody there was awesome. I mean, yeah. we had a really great time. And it was just everything was really well received. And uh, we even brought, I mean, we were the weirdos who drove an electric car down there. Drove <laughs> the Tesla down there. Yeah. That's oh, a record in that thing. And that was cool. And it was fun. And we learned a lot about the Tesla. Yeah, and like how accepting they are of, of just anything. Yeah. You know? People are like, Electric, really? And you know, went 146 you know. and a half, and that's not bad for a four door wow. We drove there and drove back. It was a, it was a right. blast. But we learned a lot, and we learned a lot about the customers that were there, and talked to a lot of great people. So 
I think, you know, kind of like you mentioned, Pat, anything that makes power, you know, we love internal combustion stuff, but there's other stuff out there too. Uh, you mentioned diesel, steam yeah. power. I mean, I can't remember all the stuff it's we saw it on there, but it was like the craziest assortment of, of cool stuff that makes power that's and, on the and planet. something that is super cool that only goes 50 miles an hour. It's like 50? Well, the guy worked really hard to get to 50, you know, kind of like yeah. with their mini bike. Uh, that, that's just, that's the big thing. When people work that hard, I don't care what it is. And right. and people because people get a little they, they get a little judgy on how something doesn't do whatever they think that it should do or how they would have done it. But uh something else if, if something is going 50, I'm like what did it go before that? Did it go yeah. 10 miles per hour and now it goes 50? You know, oh yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. yes. <laughs> hey, big, big red is even checking in guys yeah you know, rj and, and crew and and that's, that's cool man yeah. gosh man they showed yeah, up to, they showed up at this meet this last summer with a huge wing bolted down to the top of the car yeah uh, it, something like off of a semi you know looking that was thing. awesome and you know they're just 250 or whatever they they're doing but just such a, a cool they're just very matter of fact about it like oh yeah we went out went 250 right. and we're like oh, that's pretty <laughs> that's fast like, yeah yeah we probably can do a little better but it's pretty good and we're yeah. like yeah that, that, that's, that's awesome what's, that's what's fun about yeah. that yep there's uh, no matter what you do you can always do it better and you just got to work on it more yeah. so yeah pat is, a, like those pat and frankie, cool. is there is there any engine project that you guys have ever done and I know you got to love all the engines equally and everything, but anyone that you've done that you go, oh man, I, I don't ever want to see it again. Just get it out of here, you know? <laughs> In your words, defied logic. Defies logic. You, you're pulling your hair out going, the, the math doesn't make any sense. This thing is not doing what I want. And it's it's just bad. It's like that that project that's just destined to never be good. Man, well, I don't think we've had anything that like defies logic, you know, because that just... For what we do, um, you know, everything we, you do is based in logic, right? So well, like, yeah, yeah, everything I we do is kind of based it, on right? logic. Like everything is, we're, you know, we're we're data guys. So right. we when we put an engine together, yeah. even if we don't maybe show it on camera, we will measure and yeah. check and calculate pretty I, much anything we can. About I don't the care engine. what it is yeah. either. It's we, it's everything. We're, we that's, yep. we both have very parallel thinking, and yep. that where where I, the, again most of it's off camera. We're like because if we were just doing something. We need numbers on everything. Yep. And so and if, if you don't measure it, we like to say you're just guessing. You, are, if you don't you actually measure it. You're just guessing. So usually, you know, yes. we put something together. It like like we were talking about before, it has the time, and the attention that we know everything about that engine is good to go. And we know it's going to when it gets on the dyno, it's going to perform fine. I, I will ask people that specific question. Like, what is this thing? You know, if I'm talking in conversation, what does this have for compression? Oh, it has around. When someone says around in the in the thing, I'm like, <laughs> I, just throw a dart against the wall, right, Pat? I, I don't no. want to ask yeah. any more questions at that point, you know, uh -huh. because you're I, I, the around is not a number that I, that we like. I, I want to know a specific number, you know, yep. and, and uh, if, if if what we do, we just we measure and document everything. That's that's the cornerstone of engine building. It's measure, verify, you know, yep. and that, that that's, that's 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 how engine building works. It's it's not it's not rocket science. It's just good attention mm -hmm. to detail. And but I can't think. I've been I mean, I've been racking my brain. I've been I've been. We've had some weird stuff, but usually that turns out to be something silly that we've done. You know, like we'll go to hook an engine up on the dyno. It's like, wait, why is this? Why is this doing this? And then it's oh, it's something silly that we did. That, yeah, you know, either it's something silly. It's, a, or it's just a, something silly. It's a that bad we've done. ground or it's something yeah, like that. Which that's like that. that's everybody's problem. I and I've I've been I've been building engines. Oh, I don't know, 35 ish years professionally. And uh, I can't think of one that I'm like, I don't want to see this ever again. Because mm -hmm. at some point, it, now, don't, not say it didn't start out like that, but uh, <laughs> at some point, you just, you just have to say, you, you just have to, it, it, like Patrick Swayze says, you have to see the wave and accept its energy. That, that was from Point Break. <laughs> I, and, and, uh, yeah. and, and so, so when an engine does that, you just have to accept what it is and work the best with what you have. And if something that uh, you can make better, do it. But uh, I, I've, I've literally, I don't, I've never had one where I'm like, I want to take this thing out and, and put it in the field and shoot it with a 50 cal. You know, yeah. I, I, I've never, I've never had that. And, uh, and that's just because of its mindset. You're, 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 you're working on something. Someone's brought it to you because it doesn't work or they want it better. That's your job as an engine builder. So that, yeah. so we uh, we do what we can to make things better and uh, and, uh, and yeah, I mean yeah. a great a great example of that is our Ford three hundred right. when it was on the dyno. So it has a it has a carb hat on top, a pretty decently tall carb hat, which is uh, you know feeds it into the Holly sniper on top. And originally, just 
arbitrarily, we had it actually turned 90 degrees away from the front of the engine. It was basically pointing out the right side of the engine. So we're, we're going to make a bang on this thing. And for some reason, it just it seemed like it was falling on its face. And we're just trying to figure out why is this doing this? Why is this doing this? We're trying to do different things. Wasn't That's cooperating. Weird. Yeah, it just really wasn't cooperating. And all it was as simple as taking that carb hat, facing it towards the front, redoing the intake, the intake piping so it, you know, it fit, so it would work, and then make a hit on it and works flawlessly. And, it's, and you know, it, when we're trying to figure it out, we're like, what is it? This doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. But as soon as you do it, you go, oh, that makes so much sense because the way yeah. the air enters, it has to do certain things yeah. with the manifold and yeah. things like that. Yeah. The, the big you thing know. about this whole business, you learn something new every day. A person who tells you that they know it all, that's the first person you don't listen to. You know, yeah. it'd be, yeah. it'd be, I learned something literally and I strive to learn something every day. And um, there's people that have forgotten more about this than I know. And uh, that was the people I, I look to and, uh, and, and draw inspiration from. And, and if you're, if you're not learning, you're, you're, you're not going to, you're not going to go anywhere. So just keep learning and keep working on stuff and don't be afraid to work on stuff. Yeah. So I had an interesting question here from uh, James. I uh, said, any plans to for engine power to build the new 7.3 liter Ford engine? You know, the new Godzilla, which oh, looks to be awesome. I mean, I, I, cool I, 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 can't, I can't confirm or deny that one. You know, <laughs> yeah. but uh, we've that, definitely been looking at it yeah. for sure. I mean, uh, we've got a lot of requests for that. A lot of people ask us, "Are you going to do one? Are you going to do one?" I mean, and eventually, of course, we're going to do one. Right now, because it's relatively new, trying to find parts that are available to you know to everybody that aren't super custom or super expensive, you know, because right. when we do stuff, it's for our viewers. It's so they, they can learn or they right. can have a combination that they can follow and or repeat. And so we like to have it where if we're going to do it, that someone else could go and repeat it right after us, right. you know? Yeah. Well, so, we feel the same way. And we're going to maybe have to talk off camera about yeah. that. Not to tease our <laughs> oh, audience okay. of things that are we're being worked on. But yeah. oh, excellent. Yeah, we, uh, right. we think that engine platform has a lot of promise and it's got some amazing design features in it. Yes. So. For There's sure. uh, not that we've ever had one apart or measured or done other things with it, but it's uh, it is a very, very interesting engine platform. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're pretty sure there's going to be some really good aftermarket stuff coming out soon for it. We're yes, excited we about agree. that. And we, yeah. we, we agree with that. Just just from what we know about it and what we've seen with it. Uh, very, very exciting. Awesome. Well, guys, do you have anything in closing? So Pat and Frankie, a couple couple lessons from today, I think, for the audience. If you're not sure, measure it. And I'll give a shameless yeah. plug here. Your friends at Summit Racing always have everything you need to measure, whether it's <laughs> combustion chamber volume, yeah. deck height, weights, any of those things. This toolbox and very top drawer is full of nothing but measuring instruments. Actually. Yes, we Perfect. love, same same as you guys. We love yeah. knowing rather than guessing. Yeah, also, there's, there's, don't ever quit or give up. You have an engine not behaving correctly, logic through it. You can find the solution, always, and it's just yeah. like a math problem, right? You just got to right. find which variable is not behaving and work through it. But do you have anything else for the listeners? We really appreciate your time today. Yeah. Love the shows, love the partnership, and love Summit being a supplier to you. So any any closing comments not, or thoughts for our, our not, uh, viewers? We appreciate the partnership too. Yeah. Uh, you guys are awesome. And uh, um, it makes it fun to do things when you uh, have great partners, uh, you know, when, when you're working on this stuff. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we, we have a lot of fun here and it seems like, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to put in all that we do in 20 minutes worth of, <laughs> of, a, of a show. So, uh, yeah. but yeah, uh, I mean, just, if you want to work on stuff, don't be afraid to work on it. Just, uh, just think it through. Don't be haphazard, uh, measure everything. Um, don't believe everything you hear on the internet because there <laughs> are as many experts as you want to find on the internet. And uh, they're, they're the ones that will, uh, will, will steer you 100% in the wrong direction. So. All true. Awesome. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Summit Racing Equipment fans, hit the like button. This will be reposted as well on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button on that. Follow us on any social media platform you'd like. We're on all the most popular ones. And again, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Always a pleasure to talk about great engine projects. And uh, we'll, talk, uh, we'll talk about some additional projects as well off camera. So have a Excellent. great rest of your day, guys. Summit customers, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys.